Welcome to Classic Game Room for the review of U Maze on the Famicom Disk System from Taito, a game that you've probably never heard of but will want to add to your collection in about five minutes. Prepare to enjoy this incredible game, which my friend Mark sent to the show from New York with a post it note where he describes it as Pac Man meets Laser Cars and Space. That's pretty close. I would have described it as Pac-Man meets Arkanoid meets Laser Bumper Cars, but yeah, it's one that you want to own. It's great. Please set your disc card and prepare for fun. T minus three, two, one. It's you, Maze, for the Famicom Disk System. What? You've never heard of you, Maze? Well, me neither until this game showed up and my life has never been the same since because I love a good Pac-Man inspired game, especially when there's some hints of Arkanoid in it. You maze! I have no idea what this game is about, except you're trying to rescue your brother who looks like maybe he's the guy from Blaster Master on the NES. This is from Taito, released in 1988 for the Famicom Disk System if you like Pac-Man style games and games from Taito that, that have, a, have a unique character to them. There, there's so much Arkanoid in this, even though the gameplay is totally different. I, I like this one a lot, although the music does suck. There's so many other soundtracks they could have given this game. Just silence would have actually been preferable. The irritating repetitive music gets super annoying. Thankfully, you can always just turn the volume off on the TV. The sound doesn't add much to the game. So let me talk about the gameplay here. It's pretty straightforward for the most part. As you see, you drive your little car around and eat dots. You can go slow, you can go fast. As the game progresses, it gets far more challenging as you might expect. Sometimes you have to run over the dots multiple times to pick them up. And I really have no idea what triggers this, but occasionally it seems like there's random power-ups and the one that you want to look out for, just like an Arkanoid, is the laser. Now, unlike a lot of other games from the era, as far as I can tell, there's no reason to clear the board quickly. You don't seem to get bonus points for that. So just be careful, be mindful of where your enemies are. As you see, you can go from one side of the screen to the other frequently by driving into the giant saw blades or fan blades or propellers or whatever those things are. Running into enemies is bad for you. Driving over those things that look like, um... Shields? Maybe they're shields? I don't know, they're bombs. So, when you drive over one, get away from it quickly because then it blows up. Collecting the L gives you the laser, the A gives you a shield, which is worth one hit, so you can run over one enemy. And uh, there seems to be a couple other power-ups as well. The controls are pretty tricky at times, especially if you start driving fast. I kept trying to drive fast, but I'm not sure there's much of a reason to, and as you see, you can also blow up enemies if they get caught in the explosion behind those bombs. Now, one of the tricks I figured out after playing this game for a while is uh, when, when the game progresses, it gets much more challenging, especially by levels 15, 20 or so. Try to avoid clearing out the inside of the board until you get the laser, or at least a shield. Because at some point the mazes are designed so that there's only one way out of them, and you'll find the enemies start just driving right into you. Don't get yourself trapped. And do, do you see the Arkanoid inspiration, or is it just me? Like that thing that opens up on the side of the board with the little wavy force field lines, like that's straight out of Arkanoid. Too bad the music's not as good though. This one's a wacky game too. Here we're at round 17 and there's this blinky thing that says R flying over the screen. Now I have no idea what this does, so I'm just gonna try to collect it. And it kills all the enemies, woo! 
What a fun game. Never heard of this one. I've never played anything quite like it, except maybe Pack Car on the Sega SG-1000, which is uh, like this, but less insane. Pack, look at that review. P-A-C-A-R for the Sega SG-1000, also sent to the show by my friend Mark in East Meadow, New York. Uh-oh. We have to flip the disc because... We're about to get a cutscene that I can't read. I have no idea what he's saying. Thank you. That's you look weird. All right, that's cool. This game is fun. It's long too. I'm still stuck in the twenties. You can save your game after you get destroyed, and that's fun because then you can just pick it up and continue. One of the cool features with the Famicom Disk System. Uh, this one is highly, highly recommended. It's also not that expensive. If you like Pac-Man style games in the Famicom Disk System, which I love, pick up Yume's. Classic Game Room has been brought to you by the ultra massive video game console guide. 230 pages of video games on Amazon.com, Retro Megatrex, and how to make a video game review show that doesn't suck. And Jesus number two. Welcome to the Patreon Lord Carnage Club being shouted from a turbo volcano. Michael and Ariana Nelson. Ian Shore. Stephen Chucknick. Al Stever. Rick DeBarros. Jason Goy. Andy Schleiss. Sergio Matthias Hergert. Philip Straubenmuller, Jack Stavris. Ohad Kane. Simon Allen. And Sean Zoltek.